Hello everyone, our IoT assignment is about Raspberry Pi board hardware layout. Team members are Vaishnavi D, Vaishnavi KR and Vaishnavi Bhatt. I am Vaishnavi KR. The first, let's go into introduction. Raspberry Pi is a small single board computer that is designed for a wide range of applications. The Raspberry Pi runs a variety of operating systems including Linux based distributions like Raspbian which is specifically designed for Raspberry Pi. It has also been used in commercial applications such as digital Cengage, thin client computers and IoT devices. It has gained popularity not only in education sector but also in the hobbyist and maker communities due to its low cost and versatility. People use it for everything from simple DIY by projects to complex robotic systems. Some popular projects that can be done using Raspberry Pi include home automation, media centers, retro gaming consoles and robotics. The hardware components of a Raspberry Pi can vary depending upon the model and version. But here are some of the main parts you should be familiar with. So this is the hardware layout of the Raspberry Pi which include a processor, HDMI, power source, SD card, GPIO, DSi Display X, audio jack, status LED, Ethernet port and CSI. First is the processor. The Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers developed by Raspberry Pi Foundation. It uses a microprocessor to perform calculations and run programs. The processor used in Raspberry Pi devices vary depending upon the model. The processor used in Raspberry Pi devices are designed to provide a balance of performance and power efficiency, making them suitable for a wide range of applications. They are based on ARM architecture which is commonly used in mobile devices and embedded systems. They are optimized for low power consumption and can run a variety of operating systems including various Linux distributions, Windows 10 IoT Core and RISC OS. The processor is also responsible for handling input-output operations including interfacing with peripheral like USB devices, HDMI displays and Ethernet connection. The second part is the HDMI. HDMI refers to High Definition Multimedia Interface is a digital interface used for transmitting high definition audio and video signals between devices such as Raspberry Pi and a display or TV. The HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi is a standard size HDMI connector which is used to connect the Raspberry Pi to a monitor or TV that has an HDMI input. The HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi supports various HDMI resolutions including 1080p, 780p and 480p. To use the HDMI port, you will need to connect an HDMI cable from the Raspberry Pi to your display or TV. You may also need to adjust the display settings on your Raspberry Pi to match the resolution and aspect ratio of your display. The HDMI ports provides a simple and convenient way to connect the Raspberry Pi to a display or TV, making it easy to use the Raspberry Pi for a wide range of applications from basic computing to media playback and gaming. Hello everyone, Vaishnavi V but here. So let's continue. The third part is power source. The Raspberry Pi requires a power source to operate. The specific power requirements vary depending on the model of Raspberry Pi being used. It is important to use a high quality power supply that meets or exceeds the minimum requirements as an insufficient power supply can cause stability issues and potentially damage the Raspberry Pi. There are several options for powering the Raspberry Pi including using a USB power supply, a power bank or a battery pack. The power supply can be connected to the Raspberry Pi via the micro USB or USB-C port depending on the model. It is also possible to power the Raspberry Pi via the GPIO that is general purpose unit input output pins but this method requires careful attention to the power requirements and potential risk of overloading the GPIO pins. The fourth part is SD card. The Raspberry Pi uses an SD card as its primary storage device where the operating system, applications and data are stored. The recommended minimum capacity for the SD card is 8 GB but larger sizes can be used depending on the user's needs. When setting up the Raspberry Pi, the operating system and other software can be installed onto the SD card using a computer with an SD card reader and appropriate software. Once the software is installed, the SD card is inserted into the Raspberry Pi's SD card slot to boot the system. It is important to properly eject the SD card from the Raspberry Pi before removing it in order to avoid data corruption or other issues. Additionally, users may want to regularly back up the contents of SD card to ensure that their data is not lost in the event of hardware failure or, or other issues. The 
fifth part is GPIO. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input or Output. GPIO pins are the physical pins on the Raspberry Pi that can be used for digital input or output. These pins can be used to connect to various sensors, buttons, LEDs, motors and other electronic components allowing the Raspberry Pi to interact with the physical world. GPIO pins can be controlled using programming languages such as Python, C or other languages that have libraries for interacting with Raspberry Pi's hardware. The Raspberry Pi's operating system typically includes pre-installed libraries and tools for accessing and controlling the GPIO pins. GPIO pins can be configured as inputs or outputs and can be set to high or low state depending, depending on the specific application. They can also be used for pulse width modulation to control the brightness of the LEDs or the speed of the motors. The sixth part is DSi Display X. The DSi is a high-speed serial interface used to connect displays to the Raspberry Pi. The specific DSi display used with the Raspberry Pi can vary depending on the model being used but generally involves a ribbon cable that connects the display to the DSi connector on the Raspberry Pi circuit board. To use a DSi display, the appropriate drivers and softwares must be installed and the display must be connected to the DSi connector on the Raspberry Pi using the ribbon cable. Once connected, the display can be configured and used like any other display connected to the Raspberry Pi. It is important to note that not all models of Raspberry Pi have a DSi connector and not all DSi displays are compatible with all models of Raspberry Pi. Careful attention should be paid to the specific requirements and compatibility of the display and Raspberry Pi being used. The seventh part is audio jack. The Raspberry Pi has an audio jack for audio output. The audio jack on Raspberry Pi is typically a 3.5mm stereo TRS jack commonly used for headphones or speakers. It is a combined analog audio composite video output jack which means it can be used for both audio and video signals. The pinout of audio jack on the Raspberry Pi is as follows. Tip for left audio channel, ring right audio channel, sleeve, ground. The audio jack on the Raspberry Pi can output analog audio signals which can be used to connect headphones, speakers or other audio devices that accept analog audio input. It does not support microphone input as it is an output only jack. It's worth noting that some newer Raspberry Pi models such as the Raspberry Pi 4 have to separate audio jacks. One for analog audio output, headphone speakers and one for digital audio output that is for connecting to an external DAC. Hello everyone, I am Vaishnavidi. Moving on to the next part of the Raspberry Pi that is the status LED which provides visual feedback about the board's operational status. Here are some common status LEDs found on Raspberry Pi boards. First one is the power LED. This LED indicates whether the Raspberry Pi is powered on. It typically lights up when the board is powered and turns off when the board is powered off. On some Raspberry Pi models, this LED may be labeled PWR or PWR LED. Next one is the activity LED. This LED, also known as the ACT LED, indicates general activity on the Raspberry Pi such as SD card access or CPU usage. It may blink or change color to indicate different types of activity. The exact behavior of the activity LED can vary depending on the specific Raspberry Pi model and the OS being used. Next one is the Ethernet LED. On Raspberry Pi models that have Ethernet connectivity, there may be one or more LEDs that indicate the status of the Ethernet connection, such as the link or activity status or speed. And the next one is the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi LED. On Raspberry Pi models that have built-in Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capabilities, there may be one or more LEDs that indicate the status of these wireless connections such as Bluetooth pairing status or Wi-Fi connectivity status. The behavior of these LEDs can often be customized through software configuration or by using scripts or libraries, allowing users to control their status or use them for customer indicators. It's important to refer the documentation or specifications of the specific Raspberry Pi model and OS being used for accurate information on the status LEDs and their behavior. The next component is the Ethernet port, which is a physical connector that allows the Raspberry Pi to establish a wired network connection using Ethernet cables. The Ethernet port is typically a RJ45 connector, which is, which is a standard connector used for Ethernet networking. The Ethernet port on a Raspberry Pi allows the board to connect to a local area network or to an internet through a wired connection. It provides high-speed data transfer capabilities, making it suitable for tasks that require reliable and fast network communication, such as streaming media, file sharing, or network-based applications. 
To use the Ethernet port on a Raspberry Pi, you would connect one end of the Ethernet cable to the port on the Raspberry Pi and the other end to the network switch, router or a modem depending on the desired network configuration. The next component is the CSI or Camera Serial Interface which is a dedicated interface on Raspberry Pi boards designed for connecting camera modules. It is a ribbon cable connector that provides a high bandwidth, low latency link between the Raspberry Pi and compatible camera modules. CSI supports standard camera protocol like MIPI CSI2 and enables direct co communication between the camera module and Raspberry Pi's GPU for efficient image capturing and processing. Camera modules compatible with CSI are available in various resolutions and features from basic cameras for simple image capture to high resolution cameras with advanced capabilities. To use a CSI camera module with the Raspberry Pi, the ribbon cable is connected to a CSI connector on the board and camera drivers or softwares may need to be installed and camera settings configured using APIs or libraries. CSI enables a wide range of camera based applications on Raspberry Pi such as computer vision, robotics, surveillance and more making it a popular choice for projects that require camera functionality. And the last component is the data headers which stands for Joint Test Action Group header on the Raspberry Pi which is a 2 into 5 pin header located near the edge of the board. It is used to connect to the ZTAG interface on the Broadcom processor that powers the Raspberry Pi. ZTAG is a standard interface used for testing and debugging embedded systems. It provides a way to communicate with the processor and access its internal registers and memory. This can be useful for tasks such as troubleshooting software or firmware issues, testing hardware and programming the device. To use the ZTAG interface on the Raspberry Pi, you will need a ZTAG debugger or programmer that is compatible with the Broadcom processor used in the Raspberry Pi. You will also need software tools that support ZTAG such as OpenOCD or GDB. Thank you.